Faisal. It's been a while since I've done a newspaper review. And what better newspaper to do a new review than a new newspaper? And it is the New European. Um, so this is a weekly newspaper, price at £2, and it was launched this July. Now, as the title suggests, it is a pro-European paper, pro-EU paper, and it was developed as being around that concept of being pro-European during this era of Brexit. The editor is Matt Kelly, and it's uh, it's in a Berliner format, that is, broadsheet format. I'm not going to make this very comprehensive, um, but just give some of my basic responses, uh, having read this. Firstly, the cover of this week's edition is quite striking. The whole cover there. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, quite a striking cover there. Aleppo. If we tolerate less, our children will be next. And the picture they're using there shows a dead Syrian child and warplanes. It's actually copied from a poster that was used in 1936 during the Spanish Civil War. And the argument was if, if you appease problems of the world, then it will come back. Um, of course, what happened four years after 1936 was the Blitz. Um, 67,000 British civilians were killed, including 5,000 children. So, that's including the V2 ra raids. Um, my response to this, uh, the paper has 40,000 um, copies in circulation, so so far it's been successful. There was another newspaper earlier this year, New Day, which wasn't very successful, it didn't last very long. Um, but so far, this appears to be um, on on a trend of success. That is to say, it doesn't look like it's going to go anytime soon. Um, and reviews, peer reviews from uh, other journalists in the British press world has been positive. Um, the only thing I would say about this is that it's it's really glaringly pushing its political agenda now. That's not necessarily a bad thing if they're not denying it. You know, they're not pretending that they aren't biased. They're a pro-European paper, and they are being upfront about that. But I think at some point it could backfire. That's just my speculation. I quite, I quite like the format. I quite like the Berliner style, and it seems like an intelligent paper. But clearly, it's one-sided. It's very pro-European. And looking through it, that's you know, every page is got a pro-EU angle. Um, I voted Remain, as people who follow my channel will probably know, but that doesn't mean I'm un uncritical of the EU. Naturally, a paper like this is going to be um, somewhat selective in how it covers things. Um, the whole story about Aleppo, they're arguing that in a Brexit world, we are we are in an even more difficult position to be a part of the solution. Um, so they're arguing that European unity helps situations like Syria. I'm not sure how valid an argument that is. One thing that also frankly annoys me is when people kind of state the obvious um, and they say something like Syria is a horrible situation and inaction shames the world. But I always feel it is, um, it's easy to make arguments and it's easy to criticise when you don't actually really offer solutions. So the editorial in this is, is sort of attacking um, British in action. So this is the Labour MP, Mary Cray. And they raise valid points, but I don't really see anything original in terms of offering solutions to the crisis in Syria. I mean, they're making analogies with Srebrenica and um, they're stating the obvious. It's a horrible situation. But I mean, I think Mary Cray is a little bit unfair on David Cameron because she says he failed to convince uh, Conservative MPs and the Liberal Democrats to back him. But, you know, this would be a situation she agreed with David Cameron on the need for intervention. So why attack him? That to me just seems um, like criticism for the sake of it. Um, 
when it comes to Syria, I'm getting a little bit tired of people making the sweeping statement that the world doesn't care and, and this and that. I think everyone can agree it's a horrible situation. And I agree with some of the analysis that this paper has presented in terms of um, they are arguing that Assad has demonised every Syrian who opposes him. That is true. They're also making the point that this began in Syria. Again, that is true. When Assad crushed brutal brutally crushed protests. Um, so I am pleased that this is countering some of the propaganda, uh, pro-Assad propaganda we see from the likes of RT. But there is an obvious slant in this, and it's uh, EU good, uh, like any opposing view to the EU is bad. Um, I don't think the world is that simple. Um, I mean, I'll give it a chance. You know, this is only the first time I've read it. The only thing I would say is that they... They're kind of too obvious about what their agenda is, like, you know, everything European is good, and that simply isn't accepting reality. Now, if the if the overall agenda of this paper is, they say it's to give pro-Europeans a voice, and that's good. Pro-Europeans should be given a voice. But if they think it's somehow going to result in us not leaving the EU, I think that's just naive. Um it's a bit like those Democrats in the US are still hoping that Trump won't become president. Um, in a democracy, there has to be a right for the minority to dissent. So in Britain, there's a marginal minority um, that were pro-EU, very marginal, because that was you know, 17 million to 16 million. But I also think that people need to accept democratic results. And as a pro-Remainer, I don't think this constant sort of saying oh, we have to stay in the EU no matter what is going to help in terms of negotiations and so on. I think we have to accept what the result was. Now, this paper runs a risk of coming across as liberal elite um, if it doesn't sort of acknowledge the concerns about the EU that do exist. Um, it is important to have balance. I mean, there are aspects of the British press, the likes of the Daily Mail, the Express and the Sun, which are vociferously anti-Europe, and that's, you know, that is uh, that has long been the case. So it is important to have a voice that stands up against them. But I hope the new European is also acknowledges why we left the EU, and it can't just blame Nigel Farage and scaremongering. I think there were many people who genuinely felt legitimate grievances about the EU as an institution. You know, I was pro-Remain, but there's things about the EU that irritate me. I do think the EU is run by arrogant bureaucrats, quite frankly. It's not the European ideal that I am against. It is some of the issues that go on within within Brussels. And this is a striking headline. I'll show you once again. But frankly, the, the editorial doesn't really say anything particularly original about what to do about Syria. Um, I mean, it's bemoaning the fact that the vote in 2003 failed and so on, but from what I can see, and I might be missing something, I may need to read this again, but I don't really see any solutions. And that's something that's always irritated me, just complaining or attacking without suggesting an alternative or without suggesting, you know, what a leader should do. So that's just my honest uh, thoughts. So it's an interesting paper. I'd probably continue to buy it. I'd, I imagine there'll be a lot of areas in this paper I agree with. It's got a broadly centrist outlook. The only thing I would say that I that immediately comes to mind is that its its agenda is absolutely obvious. And to be fair, they don't hide that. They don't, you know, pretend that they're anything else. But I think the problem is when you are a media network or a newspaper and you kind of wear your heart on your sleeve, then you're going to end up being accused of bias and that it's going to be like being shot. So if the editor is smart, he is also going to sort of um, have editorials that recognise why people don't like the EU and not just blame Nigel Farage for it. Um, you know, that's that's my interpretation. But anyway, I'm pleased about it because if this doesn't last, then this will be historical. So there we have it, the new European. By the way, a final word, and this is important. Um, I am a European and I am a proud European. And I do think there are some Brits who 
frankly don't even like calling themselves European and that's something I cannot relate to. I stand by the right to do it, but you know, I really, really insist that we need to differentiate between Europe, the continent, and the EU as an institution. I am a proud European and I voted Remain because I believe it was the best choice, but I think people need to accept that Brexit was a democratic decision. And if we decide to, you know, there's a lot of prominent people, including Tony Blair, that are saying, oh, it might not happen. I think that could run the risk of just looking arrogant and um, kind of looking like the uh, attitude of liberal elite for right or wrong, that's how it will come across. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on the new European. If, if you've got this newspaper, let me know what you think about it. If you're critical of it, if you're a supporter of it, I, I should also emphasize this is virtually the first time I've read it. So these are very primary thoughts. You know, I might read it again and change my mind, or really, really get, you know, really get to like this newspaper. Time will tell. But they're just some of my honest opinions.